Welcome to the GeoJot Plus Core Quick Start video. This video will show you how to quickly get started with GeoJot Plus Core. GeoJot Plus Core, or Core as we call it, is the desktop portion of the GeoJot Plus system that allows you to import photos into a project, edit the photos and data, and create outputs such as reports, maps, and GIS layers. And if you want details on a particular section, refer to that video for that section. When you first start Core, you'll be presented with the start screen. The start screen has news and information about GeoJot Plus Core and the system, plus training video links, quick start guides, and what's new. The main toolbar is what you'll use to get started. We have new project, project manager to manage all your projects, the serial number activation manager to activate your software, list editor to create lists and forms, and other tools and help. So to get started, you just click on new project, then you type in a name for your project. and click OK. So this opens the project. I called it Street Signs. The project is broken up into seven wizard steps here on the left, which you can click through by the tabs or click Next and Previous to go through them. The first step in the wizard is Import Photos. So we'll click on Import Photos. Here you can browse to a directory containing your photos and click on each photo that you want to import or just check all in folder, check all the photos, click OK, and that'll import your photos. These photos can come from our GeoJot Plus app on smartphone and tablets, or from any other GPS camera. So this shows you all the photos you imported. The blue globe says that we have GPS information for most of them. The next step is the geotag wizard. This allows you to geotag photos to GPS information if you did not record the photos with GPS information, such as if you had a separate GPS device and a separate camera and want to link those together. Since all my photos were taken with a smartphone, I can just go on to the next step, the attribute editor. The attribute editor is where you can see all your photos, see them on a map, you can hover over and see the photos of where they were taken, and if you click on a photo, you can see all the attribute information that was recorded for that photo. It's broken up into sections. The photo section has titles, the date and time, GPS section has all the GPS information, and then the memos or attributes has all the data that was collected in the field. So if I scroll back to the top, we can easily add a uh, subject or title to this photo. Anything in blue you see on the right is editable by the user. We can also edit multiple photos or batch photos by selecting all the photos here. If I do select all, then I can enter title for all the photos like that. So now every photo has street signs as the title. I can minimize that and the GPS. And here's all the information I collected in the field, the sign type, and so on. Now what this allows you to do is edit the photo itself. So instead of no parking, I can type in loading zone. So this allows you to easily QA, QC your photos, make sure they have all the right data in them. And on the map, you can zoom in on a photo. So besides editing the attribute information for a photo, you can also edit the position. If you know that this photo wasn't taken here, but was over here um, because of imprecise GPS information, you can easily edit the photo by clicking the edit button and move the photo to the correct location on the screen. So this is great for photos that you don't even have GPS information on, such as one of my photos here, the stop sign I don't have GPS information on, and so I can easily put that on the street itself just by clicking create new point and adding the stop sign. And so that adds the stop sign right here to this location. The next step is the photo editor. In this screen you can do some basic photo editing such as adjusting contrast and brightness, doing automatic color correction, you can rotate the photo, and you can even draw on the photo. So if you need to highlight something, you can click the draw button, and you can draw a circle around something. You can also draw text on the photo, and so on. After you get the photos edited how you want, then the next step is the watermark screen. The watermark screen allows you to put any of the information attached to the photo, the GPS, titles, or memos, and have them imprinted on the photo itself, as you can see here. We have the title street signs, we have the latitude and longitude, and we have the date and time. If you don't want to have a particular um, thing on here, you can just hit the minus sign to get rid of it. 
and you can easily add new information as well by clicking on the memo you want to add and then you can place it wherever you want so this memo I want on the right side at the top so I put right and the top and now we've added the sign type to here these will be imprinted on all your different photos for your output you can also add logos to your photo if you need to have a logo on the upper or upper right or upper left side you can add those as well the next steps are the output steps so the first one is the shared output settings these are settings that are common to all the outputs um, we have the photo information screen which lets you um, do the size of the photos and the title and comment that'll be on each photo the title page will go on the reports lets you specify a logo for the title page and a title, subtitle, and other information to go on the title page. Static maps lets you specify where and how big the static maps to be. The static maps are maps that appear on the reports, either the overview map or the actual background maps on the report itself. The attribute table is what data attached to the photos that you want output in your output data. So you can easily select or deselect any of the data you want and these will be output in the CSV file and the shape files and so on. And then another powerful tool is our rename photo tool. With this tool you can rename a photo based on the actual information in the photo itself. So instead of having the rimg001.jpg you can rename the photos to something more meaningful such as the stop sign and the condition and you can have it shown down here this is what the photo will be renamed to. The last step is the select output step. Here's where you select all the output that you want created. We have two types of output, report files and data files. Report files can be PDF or Word reports and HTML. We have standard reports, which shows an overview map and then a photo, one photo per page. Condensed report, which shows three photos per page with a map and attributes. And a contact sheet, we can show up to eight photos per page. For data files, we have shape files, which is a standard ESRI shape file output, or the more advanced GeoDatabase, which we can also embed photos into the GeoBase itself as blobs or objects, so they don't have to be links to a file name. Then we have Google Earth output, a XML GPS exchange format, or an access database output, which is good for importing into other databases, as well as the text file output, like a CSV output. Once you get all the data that you want selected to output, then you just say create output and that will create the output for you. First it saves all your data and then it creates the output. It goes to the internet and downloads the static maps. It watermarks the photos and creates all the output. All the output for the project will be created in the output folder. There you can find all the reports and shape files and everything you need um, for your output. Once it's done creating your output, we click close and we're back to the start screen we can go to the project manager the project manager shows you all the projects you've created and this is the street signs I was just working on you can click the plus sign and now see all the output I created and then you can easily get to the output by clicking the little eyeball to bring up the files and this shows a standard report that I created again an overview map and then photo for each page that's it for the quick start guide Please refer to the other videos for more detailed information on each one of these steps.